In this video, we're going to quickly set up an S3 bucket and DynamoDB table backend for Terraform. Now we're going to use CloudFormation. Why CloudFormation? It's easy and removes the chicken and egg situation where you have to move the state for the resources you've created into the resource you've created. It's messy and I don't like it. Of course, feel free to create these resources however you wish, but let's take a look. All right, in my CFN directory here, which I have provided from another repo, you'll see the backend-resources.yaml. And if you open that, you've got a pretty straightforward CloudFormation template here. Of course, feel free to make it more robust, add KMS, do whatever you need to do, but this should get you started. We've got an S3 bucket and there are no permissions specified, so it's going to be private, and the only way to access is through authentication, which is perfect. We obviously don't want anybody getting access to our state. Then we've got the Terraform backend DynamoDB table. Now, I've just added five read and write capacity units. I don't think you're going to need that unless you are a very big Terraform shop with a lot of features. Generally speaking, you'll use about 0.5 capacity units anytime you need to write to state, but this is fine and well within the free tier and virtually free if you're not in the free tier. All right, we've got our outputs here, pretty simple and straightforward. So let's go ahead and deploy this. I'll just copy this, head into CloudFormation and head over to Infrastructure Composer and then click on Template and paste that in. All right, we've got a couple parameters here, the S3 bucket name and the DynamoDB table name. Make sure you name those appropriately. And of course, S3 bucket name needs to be globally unique. So once all of that is there, you can go ahead and create the template, confirm and continue to cloud formation. And next there, enter a stack name, GitOps backend, whatever you want to name it. Make sure you pass in that DynamoDB table name and S3 bucket name. Click next. Change anything here you feel you need to and click next. And then you'll click submit. And once that create is complete, I've got it here. I already had one deployed since I didn't feel like recreating that bucket and recreating everything. You can see here with our outputs, we've got our bucket name and the DynamoDB table name. So now we need to use that to set up our backend. Now, as you can see here, the backend S3 needs a bucket, a key, which is just the state file and the region passed in. And then you're also going to need to pass in this DynamoDB table attribute here. So let's go ahead and make these modifications. I'll head into my Terraform directory here. And under versions is actually where I have my Terraform block. And I'm just going to edit that from right here. You can of course use a code space or whatever you need, but I'm going to make it simple. So here is the back end. I'll go and take a look here. Get ops-tf backend, get ops Terraform locks. GitOps Terraform locks, GitOps Terraform backend right there. Terraform.tf state is perfectly fine to store in the root here, unless you have multiple environments and want to move that around. And then I've specified the region. Of course, passing these in as environment variables would be optimal, but for right now, since this is a fairly straightforward lesson, we're just going to hard code these to make it easy. Go ahead and commit the changes, make something a little more descriptive. All right, and I have an OIDC integration right now, which should authenticate this without any problems, hopefully. Let's take a look in the Terraform run. All right, the plan is looking good. Let's take a look in the Terraform init, successfully configured the backend S3. So that is looking good. Everything should be fine and good to go. If I head back to my code here, hop into the workflow file. We want to confirm, I'm just going to add that apply step here. 
and we'll say terraform apply right here and we'll add auto approve here just to be sure and commit changes I'll head over to the action now let's take a look all right great I can see that the state lock is working now what you didn't see is off screen I ran another apply to see if this would work and if you take a look in the DynamoDB table right here we can see we've got some action and if I explore the table items I can see that I have an active lock right now so if I need to I can actually delete this and that will clear the lock so let's go ahead and rerun this job now, obviously, you would not have seen that lock, but I wanted to show that to you. All right, everything is looking good right now. Looks like it is applying. Perfect. If I head to S3, look in my state. All right, that should have updated. There it goes. So now everything is working perfectly. All right, so that is everything to set up that back end. I know this was a little long, but everything worked out well. So thanks for watching.